it's Heather Anderson here. I'm here to talk to you guys about some fun creative things I've been working on lately and it's been a really long time since I did any kind of video so I figured I'm overdue. Um, I had a really fun idea to go through every single um, ewe sheep which is a female sheep of our farm and go through and do like some spinning videos and so this video is going to be partly spinning and then I thought well to switch it up at the end I'll kind of just share some of what I've been working on lately so we'll kind of talk about some other stuff too besides just the spinning but we'll start with the spinning so um, I have been spinning since probably about six or seven years and I started on a drop spindle and I, I encourage people to start with a drop spindle. For one thing, it's very affordable. You can find out if you enjoy it without a huge investment of a spinning wheel. Obviously, if you have the opportunity to borrow someone's wheel or to just try someone's wheel, that's really cool. But if you don't, I didn't know anybody who had a spinning wheel when I started spinning and I just, my sister taught me how to use the drop spindle and that was the easiest thing for me to get my hands on. Um, that little drop spindle would end up being a very expensive investment, <laughs> however, because eventually I would buy sheep because of that drop spindle. So, just, just a fair warning that might happen to you. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> Anyways, um, this fleece that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today in this video is from Pearl. She is... Um, I believe she's three years old. She's given us two lambs so far. Um, this year's lamb I'm really excited about because I crossed her with um, my neighbor Shetland Ram who he is he is a very fine Shetland and she is um, half approximately half Cormo and half CVM so She's got like amazing soft fleece like the Cormo and then she's got like the l nice long staple length that you get from the CVM. I don't know if you can see that. It's just, it's so nice and it's so long. And then every year so far she's given me this super long staple length and a ton of wool. She's such a good, a good girl. Um, and it's just a very, I don't know, I find sometimes with just the CVM, a straight CVM, I find them sometimes to be a little bit on the dry side. They're really easy for a beginner spinner, but sometimes they're a little bit on the dry side, and I don't really love a dry fleece. It feels, the handle of the wool is so much to do with how nice the finished yarn will come out. Where's so? I had a little ball, yeah. There's a little ball there. And this, this I, this I spun from one of our, from two different, two different sheep of ours actually, a gray, and that's what I dyed. The blue over dyed, and then the black was from one of our black sheep. And this is really soft, like a little bit on the rustic side, but you could definitely wear that next to your skin. Anyways, side note. So I'm talking about what I'm going to do with this. Um, you have a couple different options when you have a raw fleece. So this is not washed, this was jacketed, so it's it's pretty clean. There's a little bit of veggie matter in there, but not a lot. And I do have some of this for sale in my Etsy shop. I will post a link in the video um, to that. But it's incredibly soft. It's a little on the greasy side. Um, there's not a lot of dirt in here, however. I think what I'm going to do, and I did start doing a little bit of this already, is I'm going to show you how I like to spin um, in the raw, which means not even washed, and very little prep to get it spun. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm picking out, I'm picking out a lock of wool. So I want to be able to pull them out so I can pretty much tell the tip end is a little bit pointier. A little more defined and then the other end where it came off of the body is a little blockier so you can usually tell the difference between um, the the tips 
and the other side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my foot carter. You could also use um, hand carters for this, and I have, that works really good. And all I'm gonna do is open up both sides. And when I, as I'm opening this up, I'm kind of hold, pressing with my left hand as I drag with my right hand, just so that the fiber doesn't get stuck in the carter. You want it to open up the tips, but not necessarily get all stuck in there. And then I'm gonna open up the other side And like, in a very short time, you have a beautiful open piece of wool that you can spin right from this. And actually, when, the, when I have this nice long staple length like this, I like to just fold it over my finger and draw out a little bit of fleece from the fold and spin straight from the fold. And that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, my spinning wheel that I have is a little, I call it a baby toy, <laughs> I call it a baby toy because it is a baby toy. I can't do a lot of spinning right now because I have a one year old and he's obsessed with my wheel. And this, truthfully, there's some, this is a Spin Illusion Polywog. I love it for a lot of reasons and there's other reasons I don't love it for and maybe I'll get into that soon here. So I don't know if you can see my fingers. I'm I'm kind of doing a forward draft to get going, but I want to get better at doing the, the backwards draft or like the pulling back to let a little more air in there and to, um, it'll just make like a loftier, more of a, more of a woolen spun yarn if I can let more air into that twist. So I like to, I spin pretty slow, especially on this wheel. Um, you can get a nice, the nice thing about this wheel is how inexpensive it is. And that you can do a wide variety of things on this wheel um, for pretty in inexpensive. The disadvantages of it being so small and I don't have like the upgrade that it comes with is that you can't spin super fast. I mean, technically I could, but you'd have to like press so hard on the, <laughs> it's just not very comfortable. And then ergonomically, it being so low, it's not the best for my posture. Um, I do hope to upgrade my wheel sometime in the near future, semi near future. We'll see. So and it is very relaxing to spin on it and it's very intuitive. It's very affordable. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to knit with this wool yet. I have a few ideas. Um, I thought either just like a, a like a really basic, like folded down, like maybe like a fisherman ribbed hat for myself or one of the kids, or there's another really cute, cute pattern um, out there. It's called, I wrote it down so I could tell you. It's called Baby Bear Balaclava, and it's like a, a super cute um, balaclava with little bear ears on top. And I think it's by Knitting for Olive. So I might, I might knit that with this yarn. I'm not sure yet. In the next video, I will show you the finished yarn. Um, maybe I'll show you a clip of kind of what I do to finish it, of me plying it or even washing it, I'm not sure. So what I'm doing is I'm just opening the tips up again. Sometimes if you take too big of a bunch, a bunch of it wants to get stuck in your carter. And so I don't like to take a big bunch at a time because I don't want to waste waste wool but it will pull out if you have any second cuts in your fleece or even just a little bit of dirt or a little piece of hay or oats or something it will definitely pull any of that out and the color of this is 
really pretty. It's a cream color. She she has some brown on her belly, so there's a little bit of brown in, in this yarn, and I think I'll probably incorporate that into this spin. But for the most part, it's cream colored. And super relaxing to spin, super easy to spin because of the long staple length and because it's it's not dry, but it's also not like overly greasy. Um, I feel like it kind of wants to be like a worsted weight is what I'm guessing it will turn into. I would like, I'm definitely not a professional spinner. I'm not one who can always know exactly what I want and make it that way. Like I can get a fairly smooth yarn, but to get the actual specific weight down, you know, I'm pretty hit or miss on that. And uh, honestly, since the baby's been born a year ago, I haven't spun nearly as much as I like to. I like to do a little bit every single day. That hasn't happened. Now once in a while, you're gonna get a little nap like this. Do you keep that? Do you slide that down? It just depends on really what you want your finished product to be like. I find a lot of times when you come back and ply, you hardly even see those. So I will usually leave them in there if I'm not trying to make something super fancy or perfect. Um, I'll do one more and then maybe we'll talk about some of my other things that I've been working on lately. Um, I would love to get your guys' feedback on what you're interested in me doing videos on. I, I would, it'd be fun to share more of the farm and just stuff that we're working on, whether it's around the house or just homesteading or being a mom, different things I'm working on. Um, it's fun to have these little times to be creative and I, I enjoy watching other podcasters just because it kind of, it's something kind of very relaxing to do while I'm knitting or maybe even putzing on the dishes or whatever. Um, so relaxing. So I'm curious what kind of, if you're a spinner, what kind of uh, wool do you like to spin with? Do you like to have the fancy um, already dyed braids? Those are really fun. I don't use them very often just because I have so much raw fleece to, to spin with. Or do you prefer just using the natural raw stuff straight from the sheep? The thing that I love about the raw stuff straight from the sheep is it's kind of like my my garden in the winter, if you know what I mean. Like I I crave being outdoors and being in the dirt and you can you can smell that. You get a little bit of that. You have that tactile experience with the wool. You can smell the farmyard on the fleece. It doesn't smell like bad, but you can smell the sweet smell of the of the lanolin and I don't know, there's something wholesome about that. I enjoy that. Um it slows me down. That's what I that's what I enjoy the most about spinning is it slows me down and it's something that I don't have to do a lot of thinking while I'm doing it. Um, it's not necessarily a challenge for my brain, so I can I can think about other things and just be visiting even if I want to be visiting or if it's just quiet. It's just I'm still being productive while I'm able to take a break off my feet. So all those things I enjoy about spinning. I'm sure I could come up with, with some more reasons. It's also pretty fascinating to be able to take something that's this raw, you know, to think that really the sun grew this, right? The, the sun grew the grass and the grass grew the wool. And then you can take something that's so natural and even doing very little to it to prepare it and you can create a, something, like a wearable something out of it. It's, it is pretty cool to think about that. When we live in a time where we're so um, reliant upon, I don't know, China and a factory creating our, our clothes, um, that you can also be in touch with something that's so close to home. 
I think that's pretty fun. It feeds like a creative part of me that maybe I didn't know existed before. I always say I was probably born a little bit in the wrong century because <laughs> I, I have always been very old fashioned with a lot of things I enjoy doing with my time and maybe even some of my beliefs. Um, it's, I just, I don't know. I enjoy a slower pace of life and living more intentional. Am I always good at it? No, I'm not always good at it, but it is something that I very much enjoy and appreciate. All right, so that's, I'm gonna take this off of the bobbin so you guys can kind of see how it's coming out so far. I had, I had a good start on here before we started. So, oh, so it's, it's coming out pretty smooth. I'm happy with it. Um, sometimes you can kind of see how much it twists back and get a feel for what the yarn's gonna be like, how bouncy it's gonna be, how tight. Of course, when you ply it, you can kind of control the twist then too. Um, that's too much twist right there. I can tell it's not gonna be a soft enough yarn. So I'll probably try to not put a lot of um, twist in the plying. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be a nice, I think it'll be a pretty, um, her wool is very elastic, very bouncy. So I think it's going to make a really squishy, wearable hat or something. I, I just, my plan is to just spin this bag. I think there was six or eight ounces in this bag. And um, just see what, how big of a skein I can get and then make something. And I want to share with you the whole process of the making. Alright, so that's that. I'm going to share with you guys a tiny bit of my makes that I'm working on. And then we'll wrap this up so it doesn't get too long. Um, one thing that I love to do when I have scrap yarn, especially um, hand spun, is to make little baby socks or baby booties because they take up so little wool. This is actually some Icelandic yarn scraps, and these have been worn, so they're not that fancy looking. Um, for my my baby sock or kid sock pattern, I just do the the free sock. I think. I don't know for sure what it's called. It's on Pearl Soho. It might be just a vanilla sock. Um, Pearl Soho, and it's a free pattern. And I've kind of memorized the basics of that so I can kind of create any size sock off of that little pattern. And it has just the basic um, heel turn and gusset. And then I just end it with a little decreases on the toe and the Kitchener stitch. Um, I kind of play around with the cast on to make a nice stretchy cast on. I think I might have did... Um, the German twisted cast on I think for these so for these I think they're so cute I didn't have a lot of scrap yarn in these colors so I did opposites and they're so cute and cozy and warm it's just a really fun way to use up to use up extra wool and these are really fun little gifts too and I've gotten where I can pretty much knit them up without thinking too much so it's a perfect little project for me to do while I'm reading with the kids or while we're doing homeschool or whatever. I think they're cute folded down. <laughs> so cute. Little booties. So that those were fun. And then um, I want some ideas what to make with this. It, this hand spun that I already showed you. I'm thinking about a sweater, but it's not enough on its own, obviously. Even for my one-year-old, he's big already. Um, the problem now that I've ran into when I've started spinning is I've gotten so much fussier about what kind of yarn I want to knit with because once you have the real stuff, you, I anyways, have a hard time wanting to go back to spinning with the commercial yarn. I just, I don't know, it feels so good. It feels so cozy. Um, it is hard for me to focus on spinning enough like wool to get an actual garment. I've done it one time and I just don't have the finished garment yet, but that's one downside to spinning your own yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about maybe doing like a lighter gray to go with this and to make like, use this on like the yoke of a little cardigan and I have a pattern in mind. Maybe I can post a picture. We'll see how advanced this video editing gets. 
It's the hyphen cardigan by Lisa Chemery. So maybe, 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 I don't know. What do you guys think? And then um, some other things I was going to share about. I was going to share some garden planning stuff. I think that this video will just get too long if I get into that. So maybe I'll do a separate video on that. Um, the only other thing I was going to show you was this fun little this quilt that I'm making for my son. Um, so I'm doing these blocks, um, like this blue and tan green color, big blocks, and then I'm going to be putting them like every other. So this that like where my head is <laughs> will be a plain block, and there'll be another big pattern block. So I only have to make 12 of these to make the size quilt that I'm going for. So if I can. <laughs> get my buns and gear and get that done that would be awesome I did kind of just make up the pattern and then I made a sample block and you can see I messed up on this corner but I love these colors I think I'm gonna turn this one into a, like a couch cushion or something these are so cute I love the colors but his is gonna be all like I have blues all shades of blues and like some fun animal prints and some fishing because he loves to fish and hunt so it'll be fun to get it done they all want homemade quilts and I'm kind of like I usually just do really boring square blocks together and I wanted to do challenge myself and do something different so what else was I thinking of sharing with you guys I think that's kind of it I didn't want this to get too long um, maybe I'll insert a, some footage of the sheep or just the winter, how beautiful it is outside up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, yeah, other than that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you later. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.